Welcome back to the Fight Pit, ladies and gentlemen. You know the drill. We are here for the UFC 303 reaction and review. It is your boy Drew, and I am with the gold mule himself, Kai Guy, Mr. Kyle in the house. Uh, we got uh, a pretty, pretty sweet card all things considered to cover in this one so thank you guys for joining let's uh let's roll the intro music and then get into it oh. ufc 303 ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the fight pit you know uh, what it is. We are here covering the previous card, UFC 303 Pereira versus Prochaska 2. Uh, before we get too deep into it, though, I'm going to give a shout out to our lovely, loyal, faithful, beautiful sponsor, PillowFight.co. Blissfully soft and shockingly supportive, their commitment to premium foams and fibers provides superior comfort all while being soft enough to cradle you to sleep just in case you are stepping in against Alex Pereira on short notice you gotta have pillows at hand on hand ready at all times and uh, pillowfight.co is the best place to go worth every penny invest in your rest it does make a difference it's a third of your life people take it seriously and pillowfight.co is obsessed with making a difference. Every purchase with Pillow Fight allows them to donate pillows where they are needed most. So thank you very much to Pillow Fight. Visit pillowfight.co to order and for more information. And let's get down to business. Now, uh, Kyle. That was nice. This... That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I, it's the, the pre-show rips, bro. You got to get into it. Rips. You got to get into get it. it. <laughs> find the flow that's it it's it's that's what i love about what we do too is it's you know i have no problem with like public speaking or anything i've never had a problem with like stage fright or anything like that being nervous when i'm when any doing any speaking but there's a difference between what we do and what other people do and like doing other shows i feel like i have to get ready gotta like Ugh, I gotta think about what I'm gonna say. I gotta just, work, and then on this we just fucking riff. <laughs> man, this is just hanging with the boys. This is everything that we could ask for, as far as as far as an MMA podcast goes. And you know, being able to just go off the cuff, it's just it's so much easier. It's so much more fun. Not being rehearsed. Not not having to stick to a script. Not having to stress what's what's gonna go on. You know. And and having the group that we have, it none better, none better. Um, so we open up the card. We'll run through the uh, we'll run through the prelims before we get into the uh, the biggins. But I went back and checked. I thought this was a mistake at first. Um, but the first five fights one two three four four fights first four fights of the night all decisions nothing mm -hmm. but decisions up until our boy peyton talbot peyton talbot literally saw the that. early prelims all go to decision and said no not enough for that <laughs> enough of that peyton said hold hold the phone i am Dude. not i am not going to let this continue how fucking good is peyton talbot i mean Second fastest knockout is second as second fastest finish in Bantamweight history goes a hundred percent for his 13 strikes and just reminds people that he is so so fucking ready for that step up in competition. He's ready for a ranked opponent. He's been ready for a ranked opponent. That was like unbelievable to watch, man. I thought that I was I thought that there was a mistake. I thought that like something I thought that there was, you know, a glitch in the stream or something and you know like those times when everything pauses and then it cuts back and someone's out and you're like wait what what happened oh my gosh um but that was i i was not surprised at all uh i've been riding peyton's jock for quite some time now uh but Friend there's the uh 
friend of the show, friend of uh, friend of friends, people that I know out here, people that uh, shout out to Sinjin Smith as always. One of the first, like coming from California, moving out here, Sinjin was one of the first dudes to like actually like be a be a bro, be a friend, and like accept me and shit out here. Not be like, oh, who's this? fucking new dude and stuff treat me like a human being you know that stuff always means a lot to me he is the coolest dude peyton is the coolest dude like there you could not ask for like uh you know people more deserving of being successful they're just they're really cool they're good dudes they do a lot in the community um and it's <clears throat> it's at, like watching peyton go from like the regional circuit out here uh doing like king of the cage and then on to Uriah Favors A1 in Sacramento, which isn't too far away still, is practically, pra I mean, it's just right over the border, like a couple hours. Um, the Every time out, every time out, he's just doing better and better and better and better. He's one of those guys, he's fought, I watched him fight so many tough dudes <clears throat> excuse me, so many tough dudes out here. Like the competition out here in Reno is this it's a fight city it's a fight city it doesn't get like a lot of recognition and praise because it's in the same state as las vegas so it's, it's not hard to get over <clears throat> not hard to get overshadowed by las vegas as far as fighting goes but this is a fight city there's a lot of tough competition out here a lot of really good fighters out here that most people will never hear their name and just watching watching him go from like being out here and uh you know head kicking people in sacramento and shit like that and then now second fastest knockout in ufc band and weight history in his third fight his third fight bro the kid's ridiculous man he's he's gonna be so good for a while because like that's the thing he's so young still and yeah. he's only gonna get better like that's the that's the scary part is that his technique is already where it's at and it's just going to improve as he fights more and more and he's just going to gain more of that fight IQ and that experience that you need to be able to you know go into a championship fight and win a championship which is what his ultimate goal is and I think that is very real in his future. Yeah, one thing that is a very big factor in the young guys coming up and facing stiffer and stiffer competition too. Something that I always look at and take into account. Granted, I wasn't a fighter, but you know, I've been around it. I've been around <laughs> the sport, been around the community. I've been a trainer. I've been as close as you can get, uh, is composure. Having mm -hmm. composure as young as he has and as early on as he is in his career those are things we saw it with you know i know i hate making this comparison i know he hates it too but with sean o'malley sean o'malley at the you saw him early on was had the composure of a veteran um alex Pereira, he's ever since he's been in there you ain't never seen him worried you ain't never seen him even if he's in a bad never spot flinched. somebody's like yeah dude just doesn't blink doesn't blink just stone cold stone cold killer in there and uh peyton's got it peyton's mm -hmm. got it dude he's uh and doing things like i i've noticed even with like cowboy back in the day too is peyton's kind of a he's kind of a thrill seeker kind of a little like a, adrenaline junkie um and when you do stuff like that outside the cage when you face stuff that really has you how far are we 13 okay i can curse now <laughs> really has you shitting bricks outside the cage you know you see it with adrenaline junkies you see it with like military armed forces officers uh you see it with guys that just do extreme sports guys that do anything that just kind of gets you like <laughs> stuff like that get seeing them inside the cage and seeing them just like dude this isn't even the scariest thing i did this week no it's, not even close this is this it is and they it, thrive in that environment like those type of people absolutely thrive with that you know fight or flight response that adrenaline going through their bodies and they're god it is fun to watch it's fun to watch. it's a very valuable trait to have to to not really 
regardless of what you're going to see, if you've seen it before or not, not really be worried about what's going to happen. Just going in. I'm just going in there. I'm doing what I do. It's just another day. And I'm going to fucking walk out and whatever happens, happens. It's mm -hmm. a it's a valuable trait to have in a game like this. Absolutely. But OK, I'll, uh, I'll try not to spend the entire episode uh, glazing Peyton Talbot. We gotta, talk, we gotta talk a little bit about that like the other side of it we've been talking so much about a young up and comer we gotta talk about a guy who just got shown the door in the most nonchalant way possible what the fuck kind of a goodbye is that for andre arlovsky you sir deserved better Fucking you goodness. you deserve it was the year it was just yeah he's done i believe when he let me double check on that. Andre Arlovsky debut was at his first pro fight in 1999. Mm. Dude, I cannot believe 25 years. And mm -hmm. he was a multiple time. I'm pretty sure he like lost it to Andre. No, lost it to Tim Sylvia and then got it back possibly. It's been a long time. I can't remember that far back, but he was, I believe he was a multiple time heavyweight champion. He had some of the greatest fights early on that kind of, excuse me, kind of catapulted, helped to catapult the UFC into the mainstream back at that time when there wasn't really, um, there wasn't super stacked divisions back then. You had, yeah. um, you had, the Shamrocks, you had Tito Ortiz, you had Chuck Liddell, you had middleweight and light heavyweight. Light heavyweight was the glamour division always. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then at that time, when you had all those stars in the other weight divisions, Andre Arlovsky, <clears throat> Tim Sylvia, later on, uh, Randy Couture, Vitor Belfort, uh, those guys were like the springboard for the heavyweight division at that time. And Arlovsky versus Sylvia was so big back then, dude. I remember um, uh, Pat Militich's Militich fighting systems. Uh, Tim Sylvia, Rich Franklin, Matt Hughes, uh, Jens Pulver. I think they, at one point, they had like every UFC title. Militich's team did and Arlovsky was the guy that came in and like threw a wrench into it uh, in the heavyweight division and they had a uh, a rivalry that lasted like four or five fights like something crazy and yeah it was ridiculous god such a good rivalry too very good and Arlovsky was one of those dudes one of those original dudes I say this about Arlovsky I say this about uh Czech Congo to one of the he they were the first scariest dudes you had ever seen yeah. Andre Arlovsky looked like um uh, he had the mouthpiece that had the fangs the fangs stuff. dude every he time. had the long like hair he was jacked he was hairy he looked like a werewolf bro it was straight oh god like fucking thing. werewolf lumberjack straight up <laughs> yeah looked like wolverine with mma gloves on it was very intimidating <laughs> very intimidating um and he was a bad mofo back then mm -hmm. um and then going all the way up through his career constantly going up against the top of the top big names very rarely did you see Andre Arlovsky against somebody that you like another name that you didn't know about. And Dude. I want to say way too many to count. He's got 34 wins, 24 losses, 58 fights. Oh, two no con 60 fights. There it two is. Two no contest. That is so crazy. <laughs> That is so crazy. So Andre Arlovsky, you deserve much better. And we wanna we wanna try to be advocates for you getting a better send off and and you know, go come on UFC, go the go the whole nine, man. You guys, he's definitely gonna be a Hall of Famer. He's there's no doubt. He, he is heading right for the Hall of Fame. God, he's got just... to, man. He's got to. That, that that just nonchalant goodbye that is absolutely disrespectful 
Andre Orlovsky, you deserve better. Congratulations on, I mean, an amazing career in the UFC. And yeah, no, your, your next step is the Hall of Fame. It's got to be. I don't know how many uh, heavyweight champions there have been since the inception, but he was definitely one of the more impactful ones. God, he was so fun to watch, too. It was so fun to watch. All right. Do we want to talk about the he main had... card? <laughs> yes, we do. He had uh, a uh, he was on a four fight losing streak to finish off his UFC career, and he had a post recently that said that uh, I think it kind of alluded to his UFC career being done, but his fight career not being done. So we may not have seen the last of Andre Arlovsky, but as far as the UFC is concerned, we appreciate everything you did. Hall of Famer, you certainly deserved a better send off. I don't know if they just didn't know that he was going to retire or what, but make it right, guys. Make yeah, it right. No, that was some crap. That was some crap. And if not, then we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll That's do fine. It. Well, fine. You can come on here, and we will give you your flowers one hundred percent. I will. <laughs> I will. I will make time for you at whatever day works. Works. We door is always open. Um, the rest of the prelim card, the early prelim card, um, like we said, four decisions in the first four fights. Uh, Michelle Waterson Gomez and Jillian Robertson uh, went about how i expected it to unfortunately michelle waterson gomez um yeah <laughs> michelle waterson gomez ending uh ending her well finishing that that last stretch of fights with a uh, a losing streak and uh you know you hate to see it but it's the ufc man it's the ufc you're not gonna f there's no scrubs there's no, no scrubs. People talk all the time. You see casuals on the internet saying, oh, this guy's trash. This guy's garbage. This guy's a bum. There are no bums. You don't get to the UFC if you're a bum. And Michelle it's, Waters no. and Gomes has been, she's been there a while. No, whenever people talk about the, 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 the quote unquote bums and cans of the division, I'm like, no. You can say that about like regional fighters you've never heard of before on people's records. You cannot say that you about shouldn't. someone who has, <laughs> you shouldn't, but like yeah. <laughs> you, the fact that you have the audacity to look at someone who is on a UFC roster, number one, do you know how fucking hard it is to get on the UFC roster and be like, oh, that's a nobody. They can kick your ass 10 times over. It's very, very delusional. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a game of inches. We know this. It, it is yeah. legitimately a puncher's chance every single night. We do not know what happened. We live in a world where Matt Sarah beat George St. Pierre. All right. We don't we, <laughs> yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and it's and it's a game of inches for doesn't matter. Male or female doesn't matter what weight class doesn't matter what style anything can happen in there too in the interview with Hyder, he he covered that too like every fight that you go into that could be your last that could be your last there could be something happening in that fight that makes you not able to ever fight again and mm -hmm. you know nothing but respect to karate hottie nothing but love to karate hottie and jillian robertson this was just ugh. this fight did me in man this fight did me in. I got my fill. I am, <laughs> I am quite satisfied. But that was it. Was a great fight. It was very dominant by Jillian Robertson. Not any surprise to me. Um, but giving the flowers to Karate Hottie as well. We got to mm -hmm. give Jillian Robertson her 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 respect because she is just she's killing it, man. And I I look forward to what's going to happen in the future i'm pretty sure i know what's going to happen in the future with her um i think she's she, she's going to be one of those ones that just keeps rolling and she'll events eventually find herself in a very uh a very like beneficial spot a, a very opportunistic spot and i think when that time comes i think she's going to get it done I've just I've been very high on her ever since the jump and she's I just love watching how she's progressed and like how she she's she reminds me of like Rose Namajunas where they came off of the ultimate fighter and was kind of spotty kind of streaky kind of up and down and then started to figure it out and just 
just started rolling and and yeah. putting things together the experience does a lot for you in this game experience does a lot for you in this game and she's got she's got experience against the best the best <laughs> i don't no think that jillian it. robertson in her last i want to say five fights or so she hasn't had a non uh, let me find it here gotta go to sure easy gotta go to sure easy um waterfin gomez viana ricci okay so four um i'm not sure who pierre rodriguez was but she finished her yeah, those were both submissions agapova jj Ald Ald aldrich um she was uh, towards the top earlier on. Cashuera was towards the top. Maverick towards the top. Santos. Um, Botello. I'm not sure where Botello sits in the rankings exactly. Courtney Casey. That was, her, was, that was uh, interestingly, that was Robertson's last win by decision before this. Everything else has been finishes or losing by decision. That's right. That's right. That's a good point. Courtney Casey, Macy Barber, Veronica Hardy, Myra Bueno Silva, Molly McCann, Emily Whitmire, Hannah Cyphers, Cynthia Calvillo, and Hannah Goldie. Like, absolutely. A whole career gone of names. through a gauntlet. And absolute, also fought uh, Myra uh, Bueno Silva who? pretty early on. Yeah, and we saw what Myra yeah. Bueno Silva has done as of late. We're going to talk about that because holy shit, that was sickening. Let's, since we're already on the subject of, uh, I, we need I've to seen on that. cuts. I've we seen need to cuts. Fucking Duran. I've seen cuts that end fights. This made other cuts not look like fight ending cuts. This was this one was that was gross dude that was gross. that was a that wild was, cut oh my god that was insane that was difficult to watch and credit to macy chazon uh you know myra bueno silva definitely wanted to keep the fight going uh didn't oh, want it to end like that of course like, I'm that's sure the thing. Macy... myra bueno silva is so fucking game like she she was ready to keep going with one of the most nasty cuts I have seen in a while. And I'm like, dude, no. It's, you it was bad. Cut your losses. And I don't blame her for wanting to keep going. I know, you know, <clears throat> most of the time people want to keep going unless it's clearly, clearly bothering them. Um, and I'm sure Macy didn't want to win that way as, as per usual. You know, you want to get a... You want to get a win that's not really debatable. You want to get a win that's, yeah. you know, something that's solidified, something that, you know, and she, you know. she was, uh, like relatively ahead in strikes and kind of ahead in control time. She was able to, you know, really force her own takedowns and not give many up to Myra Buena Silva and looked like she was pulling away in the fight. But that, you know, the doctor stoppage does always kind of put an asterisk on it for people because they'll see that and not realize the work that was put in ahead of time. True. True. That's a very good point. Was it an elbow? I believe that... it was an elbow, yeah. I can't remember Let me exactly. That. Yeah, it was an elbow. Elbow. I remember seeing them up against the cage and... Uh... When it stopped, anytime there's like a doctor stoppage in the middle of the fight, I use that as my like run to the bathroom time. Um, yeah. And uh, I just I remember looking away. And then when I look back, it was the the referee was waving it off. But man, that haven't seen one quite like that in a little while. It's been a little while. I can't remember the last time I saw a cut that bad. <sighs> I know there's been there's been some really bloody fights that I've seen there's recently. Been some but... Bloody fights, but just like one single cut like that, you gotta. I mean, you'd have to go way, way back. That's you a... almost think of like Alistair Overeem and Francis Ngannou, where he just broke his face. 
<laughs> but like that that level of just like oh it was up there it was up there that it's not as bad as um not as bad as cyborg and mvp but no nothing was, was as bad just, as that it was and up like there. Yeah. i wasn't crazy about mvp's fight on this card i'm gonna be honest it was like it was okay it was fine it wasn't what i wanted yeah. it to be <laughs> Right. I don't I hopefully it wasn't what anybody wanted to be because I I would very much hope that people don't hope for stuff like that. But again, I can't say that I'm really surprised. I can't I'm, I'm No, it I was just, gonna it was always gonna go that way. I think that that's how it was meant to be in I think it was written in the stars that, you know, MVP was gonna get held down by a dude who didn't wanna Stand with them. That's, just... how it was gonna, that's how it was always gonna go. And I, I picked MVP in the official picks. I was like, I was hesitant. Like I said, if you, if you watch the three hundred three uh, predictions episode, I said that I don't know if I'm picking MVP because I think MVP is gonna win, or if I would just want MVP to win, but. <sighs> I think that it was uh, Dana White said in the post-fight press conference, which kind of made me feel a little bit better because I, I'm very open about my bias. I have no shame, you know. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm a realist. I can admit when I'm coming from a biased perspective. Um, but he said that he thought it was a draw, and I thought that it could have gone either way too. I was, you know, I knew that it was gonna be gary's game plan to grapple with him which is what god the thing about dra draws are just so rare with how the scoring works as it is that's the thing it's like it right? is so hard to fight to a draw and like that in fairness that's what it's designed for but we're at yeah. a le we're at a point of skill level with these athletes that Th it, they're matching skill for skill to an extent that draws sometimes need to happen and that's all right i'm honestly surprised that we haven't seen one in so long because since the uh the grading system the scoring system changed up to allow more 10 eights um there was a stretch where we had we had a draw like every card every oh, other yeah. card like, oh, yeah. I can't even remember the last draw that we saw. Was it Grasso and Shevchenko? That's the last one I remember. Might have been. I don't. And there was a. Uh... <laughs> I thought that I had found a money glitch too for the betting side of it, <clears throat> because um, <laughs> draws are always plus six thousand. <laughs> so, for example, a one dollar bet on a draw that wins will be sixty dollars in profit um the very first time very first time i ever got the idea to start betting draws i just threw ten dollars on a draw on every fight on the main card it was i can't remember what card it was but it was the first uh jimmy crude alonzo menafield fight very first time i ever did it very first fight i did it with i hit and it was six hundred dollars for a ten ten dollar bet and i was like dude oh, that's I'm awesome I'm betting I'm dropping 50 on draws every card and there was uh, a few months or so where you know every two or three cards there was a draw and it would hit and like I said I can't remember the last Grosso Shevchenko 2 is the last draw I remember I don't know I remember I don't know if there was that any one. you know like on uh I don't even remember seeing any on any prelims like I don't remember any draws at all in the no. longest time the longest yeah. time honestly do you want to talk about a fight that was like nowhere near close to a draw for me because like anthony smith got his ass beat again of course of course uh, and yeah, i feel I mean, bad for the guy man like, i mean he's, he's got one foot out the, he's had one foot out the door for the longest time he knows he's going to be true. a broadcaster at this point i'm like you're not going to be competing for any championships you're just taking damage unnecessarily. You have a you have something lined up after you're done fighting, and even yeah. you're even doing it now. So like, I, I I don't know why Anthony Smith is still fighting. I'll put it that way. And 
Roman deletes it. Just beat him up for 15 minutes. Which he and looking at them when they were finally in the cage with each other, you could tell that Delize was coming from middleweight. You could tell that he didn't have the he didn't have that like Max Holloway, John Jones like type of preparation for a a move up in weight class where they come in and they're clearly more filled out. You see they've packed on not like a whole bunch of muscle. You don't want to just pack on muscle when you're trying to move up in weight. Right. Um, but you could tell that he he did not have the that light heavyweight body that Anthony Smith has developed. And Anthony Smith, too, I've been going back and forth with people on the Internet like I do. And Anthony Smith was a middleweight. You know, a lot of people were giving him flack for being like, oh, he's a light heavyweight who lost to a middleweight. He had more middleweight fights than he's had light heavyweight fights. We just, he, he, yeah, he's just done more at light heavyweight, I feel, arguably, than than he did at middleweight. And, uh, but yeah, I don't feel like it was a, uh, I don't feel like it was a bad showing for Anthony Smith, just not an ideal showing. No, not at all. He was stepping in on short notice against, and people don't give him credit for, he he didn't agree to Delize. He agreed to Carlos fucking Olberg. Yeah. Like, that's a different fight completely. So different. So different. And so much scarier like on short notice against carlos olberg on the the what is it 10 fight win streak or something he's 11 and 1 i'm not sure how many he's got some kind of crazy streak going he's only got one loss he's he's a scary dude and that is who anthony (laughs) agreed to fight and so you know i think that we got to I think we got to go a little easier on Anthony Smith for this one, but still not. Not ideal. Not ideal. Not what I was hoping for. Not what I was no. expecting. I was expecting him to be able to do a little bit more. And riding off of that Petrino fight, like he had the momentum. He had the, the he had the parlay buster momentum going and just wasn't able to do it this time. But credit yeah. to Delize. Delize did a bang up job, bro. God, really did. He looked good. So you want to talk? So you want to talk more about things that weren't expected on this card? There was a few. There was a few. <laughs> what Which one the are we going to fuck next? happened with Brian Ortega? And holy shit, do, we need to like just give Dan Ige all the credit in the world because the dude was just uh, like around and texted Hunter Campbell and was like, "Hey." I'm I'm ready. I'm game. Let's do this. And steps in to the co-main event of a pay-per-view card and just <laughs> so saves dope. the fight. So dope. Such a G move, dude. That's I personally, if that was just an option, I would be fighting every fucking weekend. That is the ideal scenario to me. Having to go like three months of just thinking about something thinking about a fight thinking about an opponent think like just at the drop of a hat being able to step in cowboy used to talk about it all the time too just call him up on thursday hey you want to fight on saturday yeah i'll it. be there i'll be on wait I-, I will be on wait friday and i will fight on a saturday <laughs> ready It'll to probably go be like 160 165 who yep. cares and make a fucking fight of it dan ige is a throwback fucking stud dude i love that he's a renaissance man he's he is awesome i'm such a big fan of dan ige i love we were we were in fairness we were big fans of dan ige before but that's just after that how can you not how can you not stepping in and i was saying in the group chat too i think if he was rocking Lopez in that last round, dude. In that closing minutes, last three minutes or so of the fight, he was landing some hot shit. And I think if he would have not uh, 
if he would have not fallen into Diego's guard at the end, I think it could have been a TKO stoppage for Danny. I think he was that it could close. Have been. It absolutely could have been. I'd be really interested to see that fight again. At the spear, baby. Do it at the spear. At the spear. Because yeah. I'm like, hey. Danny, That's what I was Danny Gay deserves the sphere. And, and that fight their, was starting to get really fucking interesting. In their uh their post-fight interviews, Danny Gay was like, uh, he took my call out. I was gonna call for the sphere, and I was like, run it back, run it, it back. Do it. it. There Do was, it. you know, because it wasn't even like it was a it wasn't like an Anthony Smith the Leeds A short notice fight. It wasn't like there was one guy who was on the card the whole time going up against a short notice guy and it was obvious it was back and forth and they both had their moments and it was just it was such a fun fight it's such a fun matchup it was a matchup who would have ever do you think before okay. like what was it like three hours before the fight when they did the weigh-ins or whatever before that literally nobody walking this earth ever said I want to see Diego Lopez versus Dan Ige. Now, now we all want it bad. Now we want, dude, we want it. We want it again as quickly as we can get it. And we, 100%. and credit, credit to Diego Lopez for signing to fight, uh, to help save a card on short notice that had a bunch of drop offs. That one was oh, yeah. also like, what, three weeks? Yeah. No, it was it was real quick drop off. Three week notice against Brian Ortega, going from what was it like? It was team to number three or something. That's insane. So and they had changed the weight on Friday because yeah. Ortega couldn't make it. Signing into fight on three weeks notice, then changing the weight on a day's notice then changing the opponent and the weight on hours notice ridiculous. and still still going in and getting the victory that's absolutely ridiculous just... he's gonna he's gonna get some top 10 action moving forward which is really cool nothing but respect and love to danny gay and diego lopez and their camp oh, sure. uh legacy mma and and Chris extreme couture those are just awesome camps awesome mm -hmm. guys and just the perfect guys for the job the perfect guys for the job if you gotta yeah. you gotta fight falling out you need someone to just jump in and give it hell not bad spots to find them at uh legacy Absolutely and not. Tour. dude speaking and eric of nixick is eric nixick it, fucking perfect guy for the job that's exactly what i was gonna say i'm like dude <laughs> I have a few favorite coaches. Like I have a few favorite coaches right now, current, and a few favorite coaches all time. Eric Nixick, for sure, one of my favorite coaches active. He's slowly he becoming one good. of my favorites of all time. I he love him. And not good, a uh, good, good. He wasn't a fighter. He didn't have a, a martial arts background or anything, too, which I'm always speaking to. You know, you see a lot of people who are like, oh, well. Yeah, but he wasn't a fucking UFC champion, so what does he know? He knows a it's, lot. Yeah, quite a fucking bit. It's he knows it a lot. Damn. And that team in Extreme Couture, dude, you got Dan Ige, you got Chris Curtis, you got Sean Strickland, you got all the the uh my dude uh Tony Diaz. He's a fucking awesome. Is Delice, a, I think Roman I think Roman Delice is there as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Guys on here. I would not be surprised. That's if you're gonna pick a team to be like, hey, we got we got five fights to fill in three days, fellas. What do you got? That's <laughs> all up. Eric Nixick is like, what's up? <laughs> Eric Nixick, dude. He's, you're the, the he's, man. he's ready. Dude. You're the man. He's another dude we Nixick, we get, he's the best. He's the cool. I'm my favorite when um who was it? Uh, was it Strickland and uh, Abus? When uh, I think Strickland got the got the the stoppage win, and Eric Nixick before getting out of the corner just stopped and gave the camera a little point. There he goes. Boom. Oh. 
Locks That's the in. best. Man, Such a G. speaking of perfect man for the job, Alex Pereira is not going to lose another fight for a long time. I don't think I've ever seen. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a mixed martial artist who is as dominant as Alex Pereira. And what's so fucking like? I, I think what's so sad about this fight is hearing Jerry Prohashka say, "Look, I have to you know figure out how to take my game to the next level or just be done fighting." And I'm like, dude, you beat pretty much every other light heavyweight in the division. There just happens to be an all-time great, probably holding the championship right now. I don't. I don't think it's yeah. really out of the. I don't think it's out of the realm of reality to say Alex Pereira is in contention for a, like top four, top three all-time spot right now. He is. He is doing things that is remarkable. I, I. I can't speak highly enough about Alex Pereira, and I honestly can't speak highly enough about Jerry Prohashka. Both of these fighters stepping up to make this card still be spectacular because originally this was not the main event we know this this was going to be michael chandler versus conor mcgregor but conor mcgregor stubbed his toe so we got treated to this fight instead and honestly this is a better fight it's like it really is it is a better fight i don't think anyone's gonna dispute that or say i'm crazy for saying that and the fact that alex Pereira can look so dominant on that short of notice as well is remarkable and i'm hesitant to say that he should move up to heavyweight i think he should take some time to put on the weight the right way to go up to heavyweight and frankly john jones has some business to settle right now so i i but but i also think the sky is the limit for alex Pereira, and he could very well be a three division champion if he wanted to like i think he's a, i think he's a threat to john jones i think he's a threat to tom aspinall and i have said amazing brilliant very complimentary things about tom aspinall but that's how good alex Pereira just might be he is <clears throat> i was looking for the graphic uh, excuse me um i found it on uh connor burke's page <clears throat> alex Pereira debuted in november <laughs> November 2021 in three years less than three years he has eight wins and one loss he's five and one against world champions he's the he was the middleweight champion he is the light heavyweight champion he has two title defenses and he's headlined Madison Square Garden twice UFC 300 and International Fight Week in less than three years Un heard of unheard of um and the the popular graphic that every fucking page is sharing because that's all that they do is share each other's stuff um alex Pereira versus khabib who's higher in the goat list and the everybody saying has alex Pereira done enough to surpass khabib i'm like he's been done enough he passed Khabib a long time ago we're there opinion. believe me like that i don't i'm sorry Khabib, has... Khabib was not fighting world champions during his during his run he just wasn't like people ignore this yes he had a dominant run and yes he was more skilled than everyone he fought but he did not beat world champions during that run he I mean, he right. fucking fought a real estate agent to become the lightweight champion of the world. Can we, can, can we just, say, can we just say that? I mean, sorry. Yes, our Alex Pereira has passed our Khabib. favorite real estate agent of all time, but still. Love, oh my God. I, I fucking love Al Iaquinta. But the point is, Alex Pereira has absolutely passed Khabib on that greatest of all time list. There's no doubt in my mind. The only people that have more of an argument are John Jones and George St. Pierre. There's maybe a few more that you can throw up there, but Alex Pereira, uh, like, already has the resume. It's insane. Yeah, I would put... There's a handful of guys that I would juggle around the top five or ten all-time 
Um, there are just, there are just names that are consistently you you will rotate and you will always mention you know a, a Hoist Gracie you'll you know you'll always mention right. a Chuck Liddell you'll you'll always want to mention Kane Velasquez in the conversation one of the greatest heavyweights of all time but there's just something different about about Poetan man he is very. He's special. Very we different. are getting to watch. We are getting to watch something special, and everyone should just be enjoying themselves right now. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. We, I get sucked into it. We do it all the time. I hate the goat debate. I think it's a ridiculous thing to have. I think it's, especially in across all sports, it's just it's so subjective. It's we so, like, we didn't even just, mention Fedor Emelianenko. He can be in there. They're like that's the thing. It, it's it's always subjective. Anymore. Yep. Um, I would even throw DC up in there. DC is absolutely in there. up in there. You could throw Demetrius Johnson up in there. Um, Anderson Silva. There's just so many. But the fact remains, regardless of how your list is structured, Alex Pereira is in there somewhere. Alex Pereira needs to be in there. What he's doing is special. It's insane. Absolutely unheard of. Um, let me double check and see if there's any that we missed. Um, we covered Peyton. We covered oh Joe Pfeiffer. Joe Pfeiffer. Dude, shut up on Joe Pfeiffer. Fucking let's go. Dude. That was a. That's the Joe Pfeiffer that we were looking for, folks. Oh, yeah. That is the fuck. That is the Joe Pfeiffer that uh, coming off of the Contender Series. Everybody will remember <laughs> be Joe Pfeiffer. The hashtag, the T-shirts, be Joe Joe Pfeiffer that was joe piper there that it was it was it was good to see him get back into the b joe piper mode um that last one kind of derailed the train a little bit i think this was the best possible way that you could get that train right back on track absolutely man it was really god it was just really fun seeing that seeing the early finish is always a blast and for guys like you know i'm of course, you know, we are extreme sports nerds, um, not extreme sports nerds, but we are sports nerds to the extreme. Um, and so, you know, if you know about Joe Piper, if you've listened to like his podcast with Joe Rogan, if you listen to his behind the scenes stuff, you know, he's just he's such a good dude. And I just I like seeing good dudes do well. I like seeing, you know, the world needs more good dudes in the world. We need more good dudes seeing success and and being people that you know kids can look up to that young men can look up to it's you know guys like joe piper are are good role models for young kids and you know that that means that means a lot that stands out a lot to me somebody that you know i always look back to like think back when i was a young man and i was like you know i was the i was a big brother i didn't have big brothers to look up to i had you know very few solid role models growing up and just you know thinking back to like looking at guys like that those are the kinds of guys that you know like the jordans and the the iversons the uh tiger woodses you know just kids need athletes to look up to good dudes yeah. to look up to and joe piper is there's none better and the fight of the night cub swanson andre feely man like spe speaking of people that you just like you you love you you love looking up to them like they're just such a great human being cub swanson was always just that for me i was like god i am i admire this this guy and has had one of my favorite careers and just some of my favorite fights of all time i uh yeah i, I cannot such get over i cannot such get over how much i love cub swanson Him him and uh do ho choi that fight's gonna be if it's not already i can't remember all of them but if it's not already it's gonna be in the the fight wing it of will the be Hall of no Fame. doubt no doubt in my mind and he's another one of those dudes from a rough background turned it around gave it gave fighting it his all and and it turned him into a good role model turned him into a good dude and seeing him you know i i absolutely love andre feely one of my favorite people in the fight game and you know that's one of those fights that where you just you don't want to see anybody lose but 
It Somebody was a to... hell of a fight, man. Hell, hell of was a fight. it awesome. Oh, that, that, uh... And that is why we love those two fighters, specifically Andre Feely and Cub Swanson. Like, they are the type that just come game. It's awesome to see. Yeah. And they were uh, on the striking. Cub Swanson was 60. Cub Swanson landed 64% of total strikes. Um, Feely at 46. Uh, so it was, it was a split decision. Definitely, you know, could have gone either way on that one too. And just, we love those fights, man. I would so much rather see a really good fight and like the person that I think wins not win than to see a fight like, you know, like a Macy Chazon and Myra Buena Silva, where it's like a good fight, but something happens and you're just, you know, I can deal with the person that I think won not getting the decision and, but you know, having a fight end and you're just like, Oh, they still had so much more. Yeah. Um, Feely and Swanson, they gave it their all in this one. They did not. I don't think either of them. I'm sure they could have kept going, but oh, for that three rounds. Freaking junkyard dogs, but man, they yeah. were just giving <laughs> everything. That was awesome to see. If this fight would have been a five rounder, I would not have been upset at all. You could have made this a five round main event for a fight night, and I would have been just as excited. God, for real. For real, man. Do we got do we do we hit all the big ones? Was that it? I think so, yeah. Um John Silva, awesome KO over nice. uh, Charles Jordan. It was that was nice. It was slick, man. It was slick being able to like fight off the single leg and throw an uppercut off the break. Very slick. Wow. Very slick. Um, awesome. Always, we gotta we gotta finish it up with a, a little bit of glaze of Peyton Talbot. He's the future. You guys know it. Just we figure knew it, it out already. Get on board because yeah. like you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna be late otherwise. You saw it. Second fastest finish in bantamweight history. If you're not on the bandwagon already, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Because we, like I said, we've known he was the future. You, now you guys know. You we guys called know Tom Aspinall, so like, just get on board. We're right. We do. We yeah. like This is what we do. I want. I hope you know William Hill or somebody opens up a uh, uh, future because we talk about future champs all the time. If that bet ever opens up, lay your money on Peyton Talbot, folks. Get that money early early Absolutely. early um so fantastic card guys ufc 303 uh although it you know went through the wood chipper i think it came out the other side as as good as we could hope for i'm it's still a strong still, card still a very strong card we said it with gauge too if that would have been the card the card that we got if that would have been the initial card announced no problem with it at all no one would have been the wiser like that's the thing you don't no you don't complaints. look at that card and think oh it got ravaged by injury yeah it's that would have been totally card. totally fine with me um so yeah big wins uh venetia's Oliveira in the first fight screwed up my uh my ricky simon pick uh right out of the gate but solid win very dominant looked looked sweet um ray soraya did what we thought he was gonna do not too much to cover on that one um Andre Arlovsky, give him his flowers. Give him his video package, UFC. Give him a proper send-off. What do we need? What do we need to do? <laughs> I don't know, man. If if Andre Arlovsky gets shafted, I got no hope. I got no hope. Um, fantastic wins from Peyton Talbot, John Silva, Andre Feely, Joe Pfeiffer, and then the main card, of course, uh, the decision, Ian Gary and Michael Page to open it up. Eh, there was bound to be there was bound to be something to try to there was bound to be a speed bump in the momentum. Had to um, be. and then uh, Macy Shay's on. Uh, hope that Myra Bueno Silva heals up and we can wow. we can see that fight again later on down the line. Roman Delize maybe uh, fighting at light heavyweight. Maybe we no, we don't know. I like it. I Either like way, it. out of that one, the only thing that we can conclude is that. Anthony Smith, although a legend, although a dog, we would not be surprised. We would not be upset if you if you moved on to greener so, pastures, it's, sir. It's so beyond time, it feels like at this point. We love you, and we just want the best for you. And then shout out to Danny Gay and Diego Lopez, and 
uh, Alex Pereira and Yuri Prochaska for saving the card like no other, doing what it takes to give us a show, and we appreciate you. Um, any final thoughts, Kai Guy? Man, it's just such an awesome, awesome card that, like I said, you would not look at that and think there were a bunch of injuries. And that is a huge credit to Dan Ige. That is a huge credit to Diego Lopes. That's a huge, huge credit to Jerry Prohoshka and Alex Pereira for just giving us a great main event on the shortest notice. Like that was that was ridiculous. So great card, top to bottom, man. Excellent card, and we'll be looking forward to uh, UFC 304 coming up in uh, a couple couple cards down the line. Um, we got our Fight Night episode coming out soon, so you guys be on the lookout for that. 304 will be a great one. The Manchester card, we got all of the... All of the Manchester fight. If you guys are following the fight pit, you already knew those fights were getting announced because we called it. We called it. We oh, yeah. we, we laid it out for you. And, and <laughs> you know, the UFC is the UFC takes our advice and it's it it works out. So, you know, you guys are uh, you guys are welcome to join the party anytime. Um, but that's that's going to wrap up the UFC 303 reactions video. You guys leave your comments and requests down below uh thank you everybody for for following and subscribing we've been we've been raking in new followers and subscribers every day so we appreciate you welcome to the party if you're not followed or subscribed go to the instagram the official fight pit the house call sports uh those are on all platforms essentially high fight iq gold mule mma this way and uh on youtube High Fight IQ, The Fight Pit, House Call, and uh, that's that's it. That's it on YouTube. That's it on YouTube. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate the support, and we will be back here next week with some of that good, good MMA content for you. Until next time, folks, I am Drew, the highest in the room. That is the Gold Mule, Kyle. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.